And greetings, and welcome back, visitors to the Paper Prison. It is I, your host, the Comics Prisoner. Sentence for crimes against comics illustration to be forever imprisoned within beautiful pieces of comic art and to sing its praises. But today, my solitary confinement is lessened by a visit from Brooklyn-based painter, illustrator, and performance artist, Sarah Olson. Yay! Welcome. Welcome, Sarah. Hey, thanks for joining me. It's a little... A little lonely here in the paper prison. All right. Well, hello. Um, well, everyone, I've, I've often said on this show, it's my opinion that comics is, an, is a commercial industry that has to employ fine artists. And I'm glad that we have a fine artist with us today. And, uh, and we'd like to get to know her. Um, so um, I've always said that um, we've talked a lot, or actually, I just recently said we talk a lot about breaking into comic, the art world, and art business, comics, and cartooning, but we don't talk about breaking out, about you know, that through line of a, a person's career. So we want to get to know you and, and know what, find out what you're doing these days and talk about uh, your craft and how you approach the art. Sounds good? Sounds great. Thank you. All right. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, where did you grow up? Harry, I'm in Brooklyn, as you can hear. I don't know how much the audio is coming through my windows. Uh, <laughs> I should have closed them, but then it's hot. Um, it's the middle of summer as we are living this hot time. Mm -hmm. More than one reason. I'm in, uh, what was your question? I can't remember. Sorry, uh, we'll start off, we're starting at the beginning. Where did you grow up? I grew up in a few different places. I was born in River Falls, Wisconsin, and I don't remember it at all. We moved to Indiana for my very early childhood and then Lansing, Michigan. Uh, my parents split when I was 11, and I have, uh, I moved with my mom and other siblings to northern Michigan, which was very formative to my life somehow, that time near water, and, um, and then we moved to Colorado. So then I spent my high school years in Colorado and my college, post-college years in Colorado. That's a beautiful state, right? Oh, it's gorgeous. Beautiful yeah. place to, to yeah. be young. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Uh, then I came to New York for graduate school and I haven't left. So. Got it. Yeah. Um, so can you, uh, can you remember the moment when you decided you wanted to be an artist? Yeah. I mean, I was one of those kids that said, when I grow up, I want to be an artist. Uh, my mother had a photography studio. She did, uh, she photographed weddings and events and had a dark room in the basement. I thought I wanted to either be an artist or a photojournalist. Ah. So I was really compelled. There was a, there was a movie, I think when, I can't remember when I saw it, but it was a movie with Sissy Spacek and she was photographing through a war zone and I was really compelled by that image and I still am actually, I'm very, I, 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 my work very much sits at that crossroads of, of journalism to some extent and um, painting. So, uh, so yeah, I, I think early on I, I was sort of a compulsive drawer. I was very shy as a child and qu quiet by comparison to my siblings. And uh, I, I drew a lot and paint, you know, cut little snowflakes up a lot, you know, right. paper snowflakes. Uh, well, let's, you know, it's, it's great when, a, when one of the parents is an artist, it really helps. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sing, sing my woes. I'm glad you had, yeah. I'm glad you yeah. had the opportunities, but about how old would you say when you, you, you actually formulated in your head, I'm going to be an artist? Well, I mean, formally, I, so my mom was a big influence, uh, but her mother was a big influence because she painted she was a school teacher, uh, my grandma, honey, uh, Southern, mm -hmm. Ed May. <laughs> she painted on China. She painted these beautiful flowers on pieces of China, but she was very much, dis very much discouraged me, my grandmother did, of pursuing art as a career because there's no money in it. In it. And well, she's very right about that. I was very right, <laughs> but I did, I did, I followed it anyway. And um, I think it was when I, when I entered college uh, at the University of Colorado and there, the dean talked to all the incoming freshmen and he said to all of us, he said, 
just take classes for fun. Don't worry about your major. Don't worry about your future. Don't worry about anything. He said, just follow your interests. Just take classes that look exciting, interesting, just for fun. Just take everything you want. All of those, because I was a liberal arts major, and he said, all of those will fit into something, some extra, some, don't, you don't have to worry about your major yet. And I took it, I took him at his word and I decided, oh, for the heck of it, I'm just going to take a painting class. And that was the end of it. I stuck with it now. Till. <laughs> so that was a big moment that I really said as a young adult, I'm going to do this. So it was in my undergraduate and I stood by it. it, it oh, wow. Well, I mean, I always ask that question because I still remember vividly yeah. when I made that decision and I was 10. Anyway, so let's... Yeah, I mean, I did it as a young child too, but you don't really think about your future as a, someone who can support your, you know, like your future economic life. Yes. Your pen, right? So it's like another step that like, it sounds like you had other like issues around your family, not really understanding why you would do such a thing, right? Uh, coming from a farming community. Yeah, it was, um, I, I mean, this is your interview, but, but like, they started no, in the family so. business when I was eight. So I was like, like, wow, it's a uh, very old school. But anyway, let's enough about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think of me? And no, anyway. <laughs> so but let's let's move on. So where did you study art again? Did you mention that? Uh, I went to, for undergraduate, I, I, I got a Bachelor of Fine Art from the University of Colorado in Boulder. And that is where I, the dean met, you know, said, follow, take whatever you want. And that was a really good art school. It's gotten even better since I left. I mean, I think it's a really beautiful place to study. It's a, fa it's a fa fantastic campus. Um, and, and I did, uh, at, at a certain point, while studying there decide I really needed to understand the figure. So I, for a while, worked in Boulder um, at an atelier. It was very old, you know, old fashioned atelier for figuration, oh. where I studied under a man by the name of L.V. Davis. And he, there were a group of people studying with him of every age and diverse little school uh, for a couple of years. Um, but, you know, while I was, I think, like cleaning houses and just doing all sorts of jobby jobs to sort of stay afloat, uh, I, did, I, I studied there and then I decided I very much wanted to pursue classical uh, figuration. And the only place to do that at the time was the New York Academy of Art, which was fine by me because I always wanted to go to New York. I mean, I, I, there are other places I know, but that was sort of the it's the only freestanding uh, figurative art graduate school in the country. And wow. um, so I went there in uh, 97 and gosh, that was a long time ago now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, time <laughs> well, so we're, we're rolling along in your career. And uh, so, you know, you get out of school, you, we all have that feeling that you, you got you to support yourself. You would, you would prefer to support yourself doing something in the arts. And we all, try to find our spot and when I first met you uh, we were both doing caricatures and uh, I thought you had a great line and it was a bit intimidating because I went once more whoa again more competition <laughs> so yeah. I, first saw yeah, I got so comp I, I was also so competitive it was all about the money it wasn't about like I just needed to make the money I was there to make and if someone other caricature artist was nearby I was like what wait you're gonna take my money you're gonna take my business <laughs> yeah but I I agree but but I really, you know, we don't have time to, for me to like dredge up these memories, but I do have a specific memory of the line you were using. And I was like, wow, it's very, you know, very uh, refined and evolved. And, you know, I was basically, I was just doing like little, little um, portraitures and in ink. I wasn't really cartooning. But yeah, I remember. Yeah. So I would think when you work in line that long, uh, can you just talk a little bit about even now today, you know, do you, do you think, um, I guess, say, uh, cognitively about line, or is it all gut level? Uh, can you speak to what you think of? When, because to me, it's like, you know, we, we have this flat, static thing we work on. It's not video. So it's all line quality giving the illusion of movement. Yeah. So what's your thoughts on, on I have very um, sort of, I've thought a lot about line. A line is really crucial to my work. 
And in fact, uh, so I learned how to draw caricatures from a, a friend of mine in graduate school, who you should interview, by the way, uh, Chris, Christopher Laporte. Um, he's in Michigan. He teaches at Ann Arbor now, um, but he taught me how to do caricatures. He was super generous with teaching me how. Uh, and I regret some things about all of that. I was really kind of full of my young vigor at the time, thinking that it was sort of a lesser form of art. Because, at, you know, coming up through the art, that period, that time, you know, early, I guess, late 90s, it was sort of post, you know, a lot of things in, 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 in the art world in general, where figuration was starting to get going again, and but it wasn't fully, fully embraced. One of my mentors was Eric Fischel, and he really came through a time when figuration was really just, you know, it was just considered not the thing to do in this very pop art time. Um, yeah. But he, I think he never really got to learn what I got to learn, which was the sort of classical technique in figuration. But still coming through that education, I still had this kind of, you know, Western, I think about like, coloni like colonized version of what art is, right? This like, you know, high art versus low art paradigm, right? And- Or even commercial art versus fine art. Precisely, right? And so, and, and at the time there was no real, so there certainly wasn't social media, the internet was just getting going. And at the time, you really had to be discovered as an artist. You had to be really, you, you, you self-promoted, but you had to do it in this sort of sly, sexy way. And, and really, the people that got a lot of attention were um, white men, particularly, and, and, and people who came from, you know, means where they could, they had both connections. They didn't uh, have to work. <laughs> they didn't have to work, didn't have to support, didn't have to put the roof over their head, didn't have that, pres that crushing pressure to support themselves and eat alongside making art. Well, they grew uh, up in New York, so they didn't have to move to New York. You know, they had, yeah, or they, they power yeah, I mean, any number of things. I mean, there's people that really, you know, had it easier. But now I look back and I think, well, if I had been one of those people, I would have never gone to caricature, which meant, would mean that I would never have acquired the line in my work because caricature are, was I now to this, I did it for 15 years. Um, and I believe that it was as important, if not more important to my artistic development than my, my master's degree, because it was forced, it was just forced drawing. It was like boot camp. like you just, no matter how you felt, no matter if you were awake or alive, no matter if you were hungover, no matter if, how you felt that day, you had to crank on some really fast, furious drawings and make a buck and it 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 changes you just you just do you just put the line down you just lay it down and my line quality really got better because i i learned about line quality through school and through studying with um various people but i'd never had it it was just it's just it's just a muscle you know you have it's a, it's a, it's a like a small muscle memory athletic athleticism in your hand that you learn right well going back to figuration it, it's still hands on uh life drawing even if it's the same you know head from the neck up <laughs> you know it's still oh. that um you know it's it's funny i wish i'd asked this question earlier since you've already touched on it a bit is uh one of the things for me that i liked about working in um action adventure comics is it seemed to me to be the last place left in America where the ability to render the human form was still valued. Absolutely. Where you had fans, uh, you know, maybe young fans, but they, they were getting older with each year, um, mm -hmm. where you would actually, it, it's like, you know, John Buscema was like, the, they call him the Michelangelo of comics because he actually drew in that very, uh, very Renaissance uh, representational way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what I wanted to ask you, Although you've all, you've touched on it, um, and I'm going to touch on also what you were talking about earlier is that when I was like coming up in college, it just felt like if I was going to work as a commercial artist, that figure drawing wasn't valued anymore. Like either either you had editorial illustration where you warp and distort the figure for effect, or 
you traced the figure and then colored it expressively. It was really the color. All the figure was a trapping line. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I'm asking you, uh, do you think that uh, figure drawing is, is, is still an art form or is it just something you learn on the way to making the art? Or can they both be, they, or are they both valid? Yeah, I mean, I think it's an art form, 100%. And I think that figure drawing and painting is a, it's historically uh, recognized art form. I think that it, it really was, <laughs> not to make a pun here, minimalized by the minimalists <laughs> and uh, really thrown to the wolves for a while throughout with, you know, the abstract expressionists and like, but they still used figuration. It, they just abstracted it, you know, it came up through, I mean, uh, through Cezanne and then up through uh, Picasso, all, all men, of course, right, you know, um, but they referenced reality and then distorted reality and then ultimately denied that space. And I'm not very conversant on a lot of that theory because I find it very oppressive. Um, I personally was interested in the figure because I was interested in the storytelling component of figuration that has been with us through for you know millennia with um, with all forms of art throughout history and um, being raised in a very uh, kind of diversely Christian family I was really at the, at the beginning very interested in unpacking uh, the history of, of the representations of the scenes from the life of Christ, because uh, it was really important for me to understand how we got to this point, how we've used this religion through history to, uh, to you know, create state sanctioned terror and to marginalize and to disrupt and to, sexualize and to demoralize entire populations of people and yet I was uh, raised in a pretty dogmatically Christian family on all in all directions my grandfather was a a Presbyterian minister on my mother's side they were all like evangelicals my parents were very liberal very uh, very much like hippie left leaning liberal uh, of the time. what of the time, of the time yeah time. but but i still had to, i have to, i had to question the very uh, what i'm kind of understanding now more is this kind of binary good versus evil right, right. consciousness that has come to us from various different directions but